question. Okay, so we're here at a Rep Rep Fest again with Max again. Hello. With the big Voron again. Hello. But we got some updates. So what exactly are we looking at here, Max? So uh, this actually has an official name now. Uh, this is Voron Phoenix. Um, again, the, the the machine that we demoed in uh, at Remurf was, a, I guess, a prototype uh, test platform for something more ambitious. This is the more ambitious thing. Uh, we want it to be IDEX. Luckily. So we made it IDEX and changed a whole bunch of other things. Um, it still remains the four separate beds. Um, it can do, it can print ABS, but it can just do it in with two independent tool heads now. All right, so the machine looks almost the same like structurally. It's a bit wider now, correct? It is 100 millimeters wider than the um, V24R2 that we demoed at Remurf. Other than that, there's no changes. Okay. Yep. It still has the um, the filtration system. So there's two uh, 120 millimeter blower fans that blow air in the back and they go through the carbon canisters in the back. They don't actually have carbon in them yet because we didn't want to put it in there and ship it. Uh, this one has, this is a very special machine because we have a very, very Gucci CNC milled aluminum polished plate that people have touched with a serial number insignia on it. <laughs> this was provided uh, by um, Mandala Roseworks to us. Awesome. And they also did all the CNC milling for us. So it's still 600 by 600. What are we at on the Z right now? Uh, a little bit less, 550, I think. Okay. Um, haven't really measured it. I know it's less than 600. Okay. Yeah. And then for the tool head boards, they're, they're the stealth burners, but there's been some updates to them, right? So what Correct. are we running now? Uh, so these are stealth burner with Clockwork 2R2. Um, some updates being you can get, you, you can actually see the, the, um, the doors are a little bit easier to open and uh, to get to the to tool head boards. And they have a filament runout sensor. Okay. On these, we're actually using them as a load sensor because there's a separate runout sensor in the back. Uh, so we detect runout in the back and then when you unload and reload new filament, it will do the, the shimmy shimmy getting off of the, um, the nozzle breasts and actually extruding and priming yourself. Yeah, because we do um, have wiper now. Oh yeah, there's no, there's a stainless steel nozzle rest where it basically prevents the, the filament from oozing. And then there's a wiper, a silicon wiper to make sure that whatever comes out doesn't interfere with the thing. We're trying to minimize the amount of purging or filament waste. Um, if uh, It still needs a little bit more uh, fine tuning on the nozzle wipe situation, but Ideally, what we can print dual extrusion without having nozzle, uh, without having prime towers. Now, also with the tool head, so with them being canvas, we also have a new version of tap in there. Is that correct? correct. So the the old the the current tap that's in there right now is using um, VR2 rails, uh, originally made by THX. Um, they're actually separate sets of rails that slide on each other, and then once you bolt them in, you can actually adjust the tension on them. They're normally used on metrology stages for uh, measuring things. These are not THX, <laughs> let's put it that way. Um, but it allows you to make the tap, um, because you can space them out more, it it prevents the, uh, the wobbling that we have. So two rails instead of one, but because they are split rails, um, you can space them out yourself and then tension them out yourself and, and it keeps the whole package compact. Okay, so it's a, it's a more rigid version of tap than the existing one and then those Correct. are also machine mounts as yes. well. Okay. Absolutely. Awesome. Yep. And then, so it's running, both these are CAN bus boards now, right? Correct. They're both CAN bus. So it's all BTT hardware. Uh, in the back you have, oh, yep, let's go. On, in the back um, you have a custom board that, um, that uh, Big True Tech has done for us. It's a massive, humongous thing called the Kraken. So we have four high amp drivers for um, X, Y, and X and Y, and then lower amp drivers for Z because we don't need it. It's, it's um, ball screws, so they gear down. And it's all NEMA 23s, right? Yes. Okay, NEMA 23s, clippers, and those are 2160 drivers, right? Correct. 
Okay, and for those that don't know, why would you use 2160s versus 5160s? Um, we don't need the motion control that's inside of them. Yep. We also don't, you can do sensorless homing, we don't, because we need the precision for the IDEX tool, uh, um, the nozzle offset. Okay, so you're not really losing anything that we're, we would need going 2160s? No, once you're at this level, I'm not entirely sure you need those, yes. Okay. And then we got the spools here, this is new. Those are the filament runout sensors. There's a magnet inside of here that attracts to this thing. This is basically the same mechanism that's used inside the load sensors or load filament load sensors or the runout sensors if you don't have this. Um, and uh, the uh, Hall effect sensor is basically the same that use, that's used in uh, enraged carrot feeder load mod. So it's the same, literally the same part number. So you have the runout sensors here, but there's also now low runout sensors in the tool head as well. Yes. So okay. we have two. We're not we're not using those as a as a, a runout sensor. We're using those more of a load. Like, okay. tell me when the filament reaches all the way into the tool head. Oh. The ideal situation being when you're printing ABS, you can pull this out, pull the the remainder of the filament out, load new uh, filament in, and not have to open the doors at all. So it self primes itself and continues printing without having to open the doors when you're printing ABS. Okay, so if you were printing something large in here and you were printing with a single tool head, it ran out, it would just roll over to the next tool head Correct. while you reload the first tool Correct. head and you could just keep going back and forth until yep. the print's done. Awesome. And again, all custom machine metal components. We go up there, we got lighting. So the, the big question is, okay, this one is actually the second one in existence, right? So you have one. I have one that's printing. This one was built specifically for Smurf here that was yep. auctioned off. Steve is building one. Steve is building one, but now- There's two more. For you at home, if you want one. Yes. Uh, we are releasing, targeting for release uh, next year, uh, in the first half of the next year. Uh, and release for us is CAD files, manuals, SDLs, and for this, the the steps to for, for milling purposes. And um, there are many manufacturers uh, interested in providing um, milled part kits for this already. Uh, we already talked to LDO. Obviously, they know about it because they sponsored the build. Um, or they sponsor parts of the build, like the motors and such. So, yeah, I, once we release it, I do believe people can actually start jumping in and building one. Awesome. So I know the original plan was to hopefully have this out by the end of this year. That kind of didn't happen. That went right out the window. It is what it is. Yep. So Sorry, guys. hopefully early next year. Yes. Awesome. So that is War on Phoenix <laughs> from Sunday Morning Rap Rap Fest here in Oxford with Max. Cheers. Cheers. Appreciate it. <laughs> Videos from this year's Sanjay Mortimer RepRap Festival are brought to you by LDO Motors. For printer parts, kits, accessories, and more, check them out at the link in the description.